And welcome back to the Hot Lab, where we are talking the Chinese Grand Prix qualifying. Yes, interesting stuff. But Red Bull, as we said, after the sprint, pretty much favourites, having that fairly dominant front row. But it was interesting and fairly exciting and some shocking stuff when we look at what happened behind. So let's get into who finished where for the, uh, <laughs> yeah, for, for the qualifying. So here we go. Verstappen on pole, Perez second, Alonso third. I know, where's Lewis Hamilton? We'll get to that. Um, Norris in fourth, fifth, Piastri, sixth, Leclerc, seventh. A very lucky, but let's just say high level IQ for saving it. Carlos Sainz. Eighth is Russell, ninth, Hulkenberg. I mean, what a lap, Hulkenberg. Tenth is Bottas making it into the top ten. Again, this time in the dry. Eleventh, Stroll just missing out. Twelfth, Ricardo. Well done. Thirteenth, Ocon. Fourteenth, Albon. Fifteenth, Gasly. 16th Zhao. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. 17th Magnuson and Breathe. What? Lewis Hamilton down in 18th. We'll get to why. 19th Sonoda and last, I would say no means least, but last, but and normally least, um, poor Logan Sargent all the way down in 20th. So let's get then into before our winners and losers. So let's think of our, who, who do you think our first loser is? Well, Let's just say, from absolute hero to kind of zero is, unfortunately, our biggest loser of qualifying this man. 18th. I mean, this man went from leading, schooling Lando Norris and leading the Chinese Grand Prix at the end of the first lap. Well, at the end of the first corner, really, to going 18th and qualifying. Okay, not all his, not all his fault, but still. Um, he uh, blamed setup changes, which we'll get into, the experimental ones. However... He chose the setup changes. So, yeah, you absolutely have to, you know, apportion some blame. Um, I, I see on social media, some people are already saying, like, in the comment section uh, of stuff, oh, Hamilton's washed up, etc. For the man that, let's be fair, in uh, not the best car at all, ended up finishing second for the sprint. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, th I still think Lewis Hamilton has, has got it. I completely believe that this was because of these setup changes. I don't know why Mercedes seem to do this. It's almost like they are they're trying to find a holy grail for the setup of their car. When, let's be honest, their car's just not very good. So, poor Hamilton out in qualifying thanks to those setup changes. But, he, well, I, I wanted to put him as our only loser because it was fairly positive. I mean, this guy here, Fernando Alonso, the man who got this weird penalty, which we'll get into, but the man who nearly aborted his, his, his fast lap to be on the second row in the top three. Fernando, well done. And also, not quite zero to hero, but zero to fairly solid, let's say, Lando Norris in fourth. Yeah, the boy did good, starting on the second row. And I think now, potentially, he could be favourite for the for the podium because those Ferraris, don't forget, they are down in sixth and at seventh, and we'll get to them. Um, we'll, 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 well, at least we'll get to science in a bit. So the other two, I think Sergio Perez, yes, they're both in the best car, but I think he did a fairly solid job. He closed the gap to Verstappen to about three tenths, but it, I think it, it, was, it was a tiny bit bigger. Um, and compared to his, I think, yes, he finished third. Yes, he um, he gained from that fight between the Lonzo and the Ferrari. So he was very lucky, I think, in the sprint race. So, yeah, he solidified, he solidified himself there. Um, be interesting for the race because he's just going to finish a distant second, isn't he? Um, yeah, let's be honest. And obviously, Max Verstappen dominating again. I don't know how many times we can really call him the winner. Bearing in mind, he is in by far the best car. And so, and anyone, including us, that thought this uh, Chinese Grand Prix sprint weekend is going to uh, trip over Red Bull in terms of setup, well, that's, we are very much, we're very much wrong. The only thing we can hope for is their setup completely chews the tire up. However, when we looked at the sprint Grand Prix, it really wasn't the case much, was it? Although the time of day is different, so maybe that will have a small, a small bearing. Maybe I don't know, very small bearing potentially. Yeah. Kind of sad, really, isn't it? It's uh, not not depressing, but if you are a Red Bull fan, it's great. If you're not a Red Bull fan, yes. So let's get on to um, let's get on to Sir Lewis Hamilton. Yes, the man, the the hero to zero. 
So, he explains his qualifying downfall. Um, he went from the podium, as we know, from sprint in China, our man of the race, to dropping out and qualifying. And he began his Saturday at the Shanghai International Circuit, smiling after leading nearly half the sprint race. But hours later, his joy turned to salty tears as he was down in 18th place. He was knocked out of Q1 by 0.116, having made a mistake at the hairpin as he struggled to get his Mercedes slowed for the corner. What does this mean for the race? So it's been suggested by former F1 Korean Chan Lok that cost him six tenth of a second, which would have put him P5. Massive changes since qualifying, said Hamilton. He admitted of his struggles. I wasn't too bad in some places. I struggled. I couldn't get it to stop in 14, so it is what it is. So he revealed that Mercedes experimented with the setup of the W15 and he and his teammate, George Russell, have been going in opposite directions and Hamilton pretty much said it didn't work out. And this morning, George and I had very similar cars, but this afternoon, we're trying to experiment still with the car. I went one way and he went the other way, he explained. That's why we need to do, uh, that's, that's what we need to do at the moment, but yet yeah, it didn't work. So he's got his work cut out for him. I think they may be, I mean, he's as far back as 18th. Is it worth considering starting in the pits? Probably, if I was Lewis Hamilton. But I don't get. We don't get paid the big bucks here. So next up, Alonso. Okay, this was weird. He got handed a penalty for that science clash in the in, in the China Sprint. So he was handed a 10 second penalty and had three penalty points added to his license for a collision with Carlos Sainz in the China sprint race. He was locked in a super tight fight with the Ferraris for third place in the closing stages of Shanghai as he was um, as he was basically really, really badly degrading tyres, which doesn't really spell well for the race. But the pair, they swapped positions back and forth. They clashed in turn nine, two laps from, from the end, and it pretty much earned Alonso a puncture, which ended up forcing him out of the race. The stewards ended up summing both drivers ahead of qualifying to discuss it and determine that Fernando Alonso, uh, that's the second time in three races apparently, was at fault. And let's be fair, I think Alonso is a hard, but ultimately mostly fair driver. Okay, the brake testing, yeah, bit of an issue, bit of an exclamation mark, but um, in terms of side-by-side -side battles, once someone gets to the side of him and not behind him, I think he's fair, I think he's quite the, the fair the fair driver so that's really really weird a 10 second penalty after the race meaning nothing no we're not going to do a grid drop or anything the fia bit of a joke really it just doesn't make any sense at all um and also um when you look at um the incidents i th i thought personally the incidents between leclerc of a science pushing leclerc off the track was arguably worse than this one but then the stewards have always said they don't they don't punish the result they punish the action Except when you look at the George Russell case and you look at this case, that it looks like they're not telling the truth. But there we go. Um, yeah, weird. So next up, we've got Carlos Sainz. He brings out the he brings out the red flags in qualifying, um, making that error in Q2, ending up in the barriers on the main straight, and he was pushing hard midway through qualifying. The rear completely got loose, made contact with the barrier. The incident brought out the red flags halting the qualifying session, but Science managed to extra, um, extract himself from the grass and limp his car back to the Ferrari pits. And then, in the end, he ended up qualifying. Albeit, let's be honest, once we look at, if we actually look at the actual qualifying results, they are not particularly very good, are they? I mean, Science 7th, uh, you know, hundreds behind Charles Leclerc. But, and here's the thing, but not very good compared to what we think is the second best car i don't think i don't even think they've they've even they've even got too much i mean i'm trying to find out i don't even think they've got too much of an explanation if i'm honest it's just a bit it's just a bit weird i mean i'm, I'm just going to scroll through planet f1 they normally keep their things up to date no it brings out the red flags that don't really have much of an explanation as to why as to why carlos science was and charles leclerc were so slow I mean, I do think they looked re they looked the second fastest car in the in this sprint. Maybe they've looked at that and gone, we're going to do super, super tyre saving, and that's how we're going to beat the Red Bulls. That would be great. Um, I digress. I personally don't think that's going. I don't think that's going to happen. But you never know. Anyway, who's going to who's who we've got for the for the race? I think it's going to be um, changing it because our my, my predictions are very different. Well, not that different. Um, Verstappen, Perez, 
third. Let's just go for Norris. I think Mal. I think Mal said Norris as well in our, in our, in our, in our show. He, he's obviously a wiser man than me. Um, in, in 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 terms of that, so yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. If that is the case, I'm gonna have to definitely follow his lead. So if you like what you see, please send us a massive subscribe. Um, give us a like. Even making it to the end, if you may, if you even do one of them, you are an F1 champion. If you do both of them, you are a multiple champion in our eyes. Thank you very much. Stay tuned. We'll be back after the race doing a show, and we will no doubt be speaking to you soon. Thank you.